Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel, Bound in a Bookmarked. I am Jaleesa. <clears throat> so the last video I uploaded was kind of like a recent reads, catch up with what I've been reading. I've been having a reading crisis because I was reading six books last week, not like simultaneously, but I mean like I would read two books a day, like different books, kind of just reading through 15, 20 pages a day by the weekend. So really by yesterday, which day is Saturday, so by Friday, um, I just wasn't feeling anything I was reading. So I was like, I'm gonna do a 12 hour readathon or whatever, yeah. A 12 hour readathon this weekend just for myself to kind of sit back pick different books that I really have been wanting to read and just read those so the first book I'll be reading that I have already started a little bit I'm on page like 20 um, is the other black girl by Zakia Delilah Harris and this book follows two characters Nella and Hazel um, and they both work in publishing so that's really exciting to kind of read a book that centers that career field and so Nella and Hazel are both black and Nella was at first the only black girl in the office she now has another black girl joining her, Hazel. Nella's excited, you know, she's looking forward to seeing someone in the office who looks like her. I understand that sentiment of it's, it's no longer just me, you know, I get it. Um, but Nella starts finding different things on her office, different notes, um, and it's pretty much kind of becoming iced out and she immediately assumes that it's Hazel doing these things. Now there is some big twist in this book that I don't know about. Um, there are some people who were disappointed in the plot twist. I am already kind of seeing some things happening. It's, yeah, it's already had some things in here that I was like mm, okay Nella that's interesting interesting thoughts I think it'll be a very thought-provoking book this next book I have been waiting for um, I waited for an entire year for this book to drop and that is Daughter of Sparta so this book follows Apollo and Daphne so Daphne has been training her mind and her body her whole life to be accepted by the people of Sparta and unfortunately something happens to where her brother's life is now on the line in order to save her brother's life she has to work with Apollo who is someone she's not too fond of and they have to work together to find these nine items that were stolen from Mount Olympus and return them and if they don't well the fate of her brother won't be a good one I do know that this is going to be I don't know I'm just I'm just speculating here that this will be enemies to lovers situation too so I like that it might have kind of that romantic element as a subplot and basically any book that I'm reading I like to have a subplot of some kind of romance in there um, but I don't have to have it but I do enjoy it I'm not gonna turn it away um, so yeah that's the next one um, and then lastly I will try to get through they wish they were us by Jessica Goodman this is like a take on um, I believe like pretty little liars and gossip girl that whole group of best friends one best friend is killed and they are all at the center of what happened to their friend they're rich they're wealthy they are drama filled um and that's pretty much yeah that's pretty much the whole story time me up so um i'm excited for this too all right so i'm gonna come back to you when i have more of an update more things to say until then i will see you in just a short little bit Um, it's almost two o'clock in the morning technically Sunday morning so like Saturday night just ended and I didn't read much today I got distracted for majority of the day I read I just didn't read as much as I wanted to I just want to quickly come on here and talk about where I am in this first book I'm on page 100 um I have a lot of thoughts on Nella I have a lot of thoughts on her way of thinking her way of viewing the world her way of viewing her white colleagues in publishing her way of viewing her black colleague in publishing and just her worldview in general is very interesting I can't say I completely relate to Nella there are some things for sure in her past you know as a child growing up that I can definitely attest to but some of the way that she thinks is it's feeling a bit hypocritical to me um, so I'm, I'm thinking that I need to sit on the first 100 pages. I can tell that this book is trying. Um, but those are my initial thoughts on the first 100 pages. So I am going to put my hair up and go to bed because I am quite tired. I know I said this is going to be a 12 hour reading vlog and it will be, um, tomorrow. The 12 hours will start. <laughs> they don't start today because I, I didn't read for 12 hours today. That's the plan for tomorrow. We'll see how it goes. Until then, good night. <laughs> Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Before I get into 
Um, I'm gonna insert a picture here, but a lot of you saw me on Instagram yesterday, but I took a picture of my outfit yesterday and I was wearing this sleep t-shirt. I don't have it on now, but I was wearing it in the last clip and I got a lot of compliments on that sleep shirt. Um, and it read like a uh, late night reading club or late night readers club, I think. And so I actually got that shirt from Hello Lovely Box. I am a rep for them. Um, I have a code BNB15. So I wanted to show you what else I got from them because I got more than just that. I got two tumblers and you can never have too many tumblers unless you're my mother. She actually was not <laughs> that thrilled to see that I had more. But I'm like, mom, sorry. I, I don't know what to do. I, um, I like tumblers. Um, but this one says Moody Readers Club. Um, reading whatever we feel like. And this one says Read by Moonlight. I actually got some, <laughs> some bookmarks. Pizza is my favorite love triangle. So this purple one says, if I can't bring my book, I donut want to go. Very punny. And then the last one is romance is my cup of tea, which we know that's very true for myself. And then I got stickers. They're kind of the same, very similar to, they're very similar to the sayings that are on these bookmarks, but they're stickers. So I'm probably going to use a few of these on my computer. And then last but not least, probably my favorite item next to my sleep shirt that I was wearing in the last clip and on Instagram are these super comfortable. Let me just show you. These super comfortable sweatpants. They have BU, Bibliomania University. Very cute, um, very cozy, and they have pockets. Um, so now let's get into the other black girl because quick, quick background. Nella works for a publishing company called Wagner and initially she was the only black woman working there. Hazel has now arrived. She's also a black woman. And so Nella instantly feels kind of this connection to Hazel. Nella just received a letter telling her to leave Wagner now. Her instant thought process is that it's Hazel because she's another black woman coming into a space where Nella's already been occupying for two years and she might feel like she needs to kind of one up the girl. What I am finding is that Nella has this innate feeling to be pretty much not only respected but approved by other black women. I'm noticing throughout this book the conversation she's having with people, the things that she's saying, even what she's thinking, it seems like she initially off the bat wanted Hazel to approve of her as, a, as another black woman. Kind of to give her like that sense of, yes, you're black and I recognize that you're black. I don't care how you act. I don't care where you come from. I don't care how you speak, how you write, how you sound, how you dress, how you walk, how you live your life in the world. If you're black, you will always be black. There is no, it's not a spectrum. And I know that in our community, it seems like there is. And for Nella, she grew up in a mostly white community went to an all-white school for the most part most of her friends were white i did grow up in the most part with mostly white friends until about i would say middle school and even moving into college my friends were mostly black i mean i had a couple of friends who weren't but for the most part my friend group was always black or brown so i can understand nella feeling kind of like she wasn't black enough i felt that way in elementary school i did i mean even in middle school i struggled with am i black enough i will never forget one of my white friends in high school um there was a song that she knew by lil wayne i didn't know lil wayne's not my favorite rapper so i don't know a lot of his songs but i know quite a bit and she knew all the words and she was like oh, i'm blacker than you and i was like and it was comments like that of course it's it's ignorance on both sides because although I didn't check her that in that minute I should have but I was young and I didn't have that voice yet for myself and she was ignorant in her comment not because she was trying to be um rude but it's just it's learned behaviors and so for Nella at this age I feel like she's still stuck in her younger self her younger mentality because she is extremely threatened by Hazel in her mind like when you read from her perspective you know that she she loves being black at the same time she's had negative experiences in her life that's caused her to feel as though she will never kind of I guess live up to that standard of what it means to be a black woman and so she's really taken to assimilating into into the world she's assimilated into what she believes white people expect of her to be and that is kind of sad it is because we should never have to feel like we need to assimilate into anything we should be able to be our most authentic self however that may look and so it's very frustrating rooting from her perspective because she claims to want to break the barriers of traditional practices in publishing and yet she she will make comments about how it's always been done this way. It's tradition. That's just how it's done. And Nella's just like, well, that's just how it's always been done. So in my mind, it's like, okay, you want to break this barrier down. And at the same time, you're still walking around saying, oh, it's just tradition. Start with something small and break it. Start that way. It's really frustrating that Nella automatically assumes the worst of Hazel, um, that she feels like Hazel's out to get her, that Hazel's trying to step on her to step ahead. And I know this kind of thing happens, but I guess for me, it's just this idea that Nella, not only does she seek approval from Hazel while simultaneously 
accusing her of all types of things with no proof. It's like she's doing the thing that a lot of people do to us often. On the flip side of that, Hazel's character is very mysterious. I don't really know her motive um, because there are moments where I feel like, okay, she's definitely down for befriending Nella, but there are moments where I feel like she is trying to get noticed by those in her in the workplace but at the same time you know you have to understand yes this is another black woman you're competing against that happens to be the circumstance that's the circumstance because I, I would expect that although there are moments of collaboration there are also moments where you do have to kind of step out and stand out on your own if you want to move up now there are some moments where it could read like Hazel's trying to sabotage Nella. I'm I'm not really sure. I'm not really completely sure. Hazel's character is just one that I, I, I'm not sure that I trust completely either. I don't really trust anybody in this book <laughs> actually at the moment. Nella has a white boyfriend named Owen. You know, I never dated a white guy before. I have talked to white guys before. I've talked to guys of all backgrounds, but he makes certain comments sometimes that Nella kind of just laughs off. And in my mind, I just get really confused by her because for somebody who wants to help progress black people in publishing um, and in the world in general. She has no problem with allowing her boyfriend to say all types of off the wall things. And to me, it's like, this is your boyfriend, someone you claim to love and loves you. You should be able to check his ignorance. You should be able to check those comments, those statements. Let him know that what he just said was actually kind of a little bit offensive or at the very least, just downright rude. So in terms of the writing style of this book, I like it so far. I think that Zakia does a really great job of writing in a way that makes this book feel like it's for anyone. I've seen comments that people felt like this book was written for non-black people. I don't necessarily agree with that. I do feel as though this book was written in a way that as a black woman I can totally understand some of the some of the conversations that Nella has, that Hazel has, that all the other millions of characters in this book have. I, I don't feel like this book is written just for them. I feel like anyone can read it and take something away from it. Um, because I feel like this book does, does a great job of kind of diving into anti-blackness. Black women versus black women. I mean, that's a real thing that happens. Doesn't mean it's a good thing. Doesn't mean it's a pretty sight to see. It's really ugly. I hate that it happens, but it, it happens. Some of us are not working together. Some of us are working against each other and not because we want to, so to speak, but because we feel like we have no other choice. Um, because at times it feels as though a lot of us can't exist in the same space. I don't like it. Like, I don't like that that happens. I don't like that we feel that that's necessary to do. It is a thing that a lot of people go through. Now, not all people deal with that. The one thing that I'm having a slightly difficult time with following is this, these jumps happening. We're getting like four different POVs from three different time periods and it's a little bit hard to follow along because it's not quite as cohesive as I would like for it to be. Um, but in terms of just everything else, I'm not wowed by the characters. I'm not wowed by the storyline. Um, so the next update I will have will be at the end of the book because I have two other books I wanna get done in this vlog. So I don't wanna talk your ear off too much. So I'm gonna try to keep it kind of brief with each book. But when I come back, I will be done with the other black girl. See y'all later. It's Monday and it is almost 2.30 p.m. I definitely was supposed to be done with this video two days ago. I'm going to discuss this book for like the first five minutes with spoiler free. I will put a timestamp as to when the spoiler part will begin because I have some things I need to get off my chest I need to talk about. So really quick rundown. I already discussed the first half of this book in my blog. The latter half of the book, not a fan. Pacing was not good. But by the halfway point of this book, I should start feeling like some real emotions. I should start feeling a bit nervous. I was very bored with this story. Um, so in terms of the book being a thriller, and being like considered horror, being a mix between Get Out and The Devil Wears Prada, I, I didn't feel The Devil Wears Prada part at all. In terms of the Get Out part, I saw the attempt, the characters. There were only three characters that I really cared about. Hazel, Kendra Ray, Diana. Everyone else didn't care, including the main character, Nella. Um, and you know, anti-blackness is a real thing that people deal with. So that I didn't even mind. And in terms of the <laughs> kind of the kind of the discussion surrounding how white publishing is, we know that the industry doesn't always do a great job of showcasing like a reflection of the world. So I mean, overall, by being totally honest with you, I didn't enjoy this. I gave this book two stars. Outside of the content, it being a thriller, I didn't feel 
the, what I should feel when I read a thriller. I felt like what the author used, the get out portion of the book, felt unfair to the black community and I'll explain why in, in a second. And this book definitely asks questions of us. Um, it begs the question, how far are we willing to go to numb ourselves to the world's troubles in order to make it in the corporate world? How far are we willing to go? What are we willing to do in order to just feel nothing so that we can, we don't have to burden ourselves with the with the dark feelings and the, and the negative feelings and emotions that we sometimes have um, that can hold us back in other areas of our life. How far are we willing to go to numb that part of us? I will say though that the one thing I really loved about this book and the message that I, I got, the main message, the world is harsh already as it is but for a black person it is so very difficult what this book shows though is that we're tired we don't really want to feel it but we also don't want to numb ourselves to it but if we could would we that is the question that this book i feel like asks if we could numb ourselves to all of the challenges that we face out there would we do it i wanted to love this um, but I didn't love it. So now we're going to spoilers. The first thing I want to talk about is the device that was used for the get up portion of the book. We know now that there was a smooth, smooth out, like, gr hair grease that Hazel was making, um, that she was using on other black women to pretty much smooth out the kinks and make them more, um, what's the word? Make them, um, more willing to dial back on their blackness. Basically, in a nutshell, this hair grease made black people okay with what was happening around them not concerned with police brutality or racism in the workplace it made them able to be numb to those emotions and those feelings that come with seeing those things happen here's the reason why i didn't like that as being the thing that was dedicated i guess or not dedicated but was um inspired by get out in the black community there is this ongoing discussion an argument if you will about natural hair versus straightened hair. The thing I didn't like about the fact that this grease smoothed out the kinks of a person, of their blackness, kind of made me think about how a lot of black people who are natural tend to shun those who are not, tend to shun those who straighten their hair, who still get relaxers. And it makes it seem like if you're the kind of person who smooths out your kinks, or in other words, relaxes your hair, that you are trying to appeal to white people. Obviously I'm natural and I decided to do that because that chemical that was in my head all those years was damaging my hair. It had to do with not wanting straight hair. I love wearing wigs. It makes it seem like those with straightened hair aren't as black as those with natural hair because that's that's what I read when I read that and that was like the device that was used and again that's my interpretation of the book and of that use of the whole hair grease thing. Whatever's on your head is yours and I feel like at this point we should be free enough in our own confines of our community to be able to do that. Like I get the point, I do, but again I feel like it's, it causes the separation between the two people. Now let's move on to the characters, please, because I hated almost everyone in this book. <laughs> Nella, in her mind, she wants to be all black everything, and in her mind, she is until Hazel gets to the building. She is now threatened. She is so threatened by Hazel because Hazel has lots. Hazel has a brown boyfriend. All of this stuff and out of nowhere, Nella doesn't feel black anymore. And now she wants to be validated and she wants the approval of Hazel. So she's struggling internally with getting the approval of black people and white people. I need someone to help me understand what happened to Diana, Owen, and Shawnee. Um, this book left so many loose ends. For example, Diana's character and her relationship with Kendra was very fascinating. We kind of get the idea that this whole thing kind of started with Diana and Kendra and Richard way back in the 80s, although I'm sure it happened long before that. But we know that Richard was like working with Diana to pretty much find black women and fix them. It's hard to judge this the content of this book because it is so real. At the same time, I, I don't know. It's hard for me to explain, but just know that I really didn't like this book. There were too many loose ends, the multiple timelines, the multiple POVs. Some of them are really out of place. Some of them are really unnecessary. So I just feel like this book was kind of all over the place. Unfortunately, I didn't love it. I love the cover. I think the cover is beautiful, but so two stars. So anyway, onto something else. I'm going to be starting They Wish They Were Us. In my mind, I want to feel thrilled. So I'm going to try my hand at this book. Um, so yeah, we'll see.
so I simply don't feel like reading They Wish They Were Us anymore and maybe I might read a little bit of it but I'm about to actually start Six of Crows. I recently saw somebody reading this on Twitter, I can't remember who it was, but they loved it and then they read Crooked Kingdom right after and they loved that. So I'm hoping that I'll love this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start reading Six of Crows. Yeah, I'm finally doing it. I'm finally reading Six of Crows. So there we go. And I probably won't finish this book in this vlog, but I do want to get like, you know, a good way through. So I shall be back. So I just wanted to really fast, and I do mean like really fast because it's 10 o'clock at night. I did start a different book. Well, not a different book. You guys already know that I went ahead and switched from They Wish They Were Us to Six of Crows. Um, a lot of you have asked me if I read it before, and I, I never have. Um, I've heard a lot about Six of Crows, about Shadow and Bone. Six different people coming together to perform a heist it sounded really intriguing. This book throws you like right into the mix of everything. I, I get to chapter one, I don't know who the heck these people are i don't know who juiced is juiced right is that the person's name yeah juiced don't know who that is um i'm like who the heck is anya i really am enjoying how the chapters are kind of divvied up this book seems like it's gonna be very quick like a very quick paced book i'm on page 58 right now i have already started tabbing so at the moment i have four colors oh no nope, i have three yes yeah, so green is just for climactic or intense moments blue is for the magic or world building and then pink are just quotes that i really am enjoying so far in terms of quotes i would love to quote everything that comes out of kaz Brecker's mouth <laughs> at the moment i'm actually really enjoying this but i'm gonna try to get a good ways through tomorrow so i'm actually about to call it a night tonight it's not super late but i'm gonna try to get some sleep and then i can get up pretty early tomorrow and start reading you know give you more of my thoughts on the book and then wrap it up i'll see you guys in like two seconds <laughs> so it is tuesday afternoon well really more so like evening it's like 4 30 i think I have a few more pages left um of part one of six of crows and so far i'm really liking the writing i'm finding that i enjoy the way that lee bardugo describes places i think that she does a great job of kind of setting the tone for a place and kind of what that feels like to be there for the characters and as the reader after reading ninth house i feel like that's definitely her strong suit is writing a good setting that's something that i think i'm enjoying the most at the moment um the characters as well they all have this kind of mysterious undertone where at this exact point in the book I don't really know much about them I don't know their background or their history but I know that there's a lot a lot to the people that are in the story aside from that though I don't have any strong opinions of anything quite yet I'm only on page like 80 or something like that nothing to um concrete right now now that i know what the actual mission is i have that to look forward to outside of that though i'm waiting for that to kind of come through i'm waiting to see how Kaz is going to form his team of people to do this mission i'm hoping that it'll pick up a bit more soon anyway i do have some things to do i need to go and edit this video i need to eat lunch it's not even lunchtime. it's four o'clock so basically dinner but i'm going to go eat now for the first time today and then i have some homework i need to do anyway as always hope that you guys enjoy this video and i will see you in my very next one